All right, so this is where we are so far with our cart or our line art jumble. My cat themed one has become kind of macabre and weird, which I'm fine with. So I combined everything onto one layer. I got rid of all the white on that combined layer. And I did that by using the magic wand, unchecking contiguous, selecting on the white pixels of the combined layer, and then deleting all the white. Because I did that, I can now go to that same layer and click on all the black. And you can see all the black pixels are selected. Some are softer edge, some are harder edge, it just depends on what that reference was, what that resolution was. Now, if I turn off all the layers, except for this background white, just so you can see it, all I have left is my selection. And I can move that selection between layers, right? So I'm gonna move it onto this cat wallpaper that I found. And now I'm gonna use it like a stamp. In the history, it's actually gonna be something like stamp visible. And I'm gonna hit Command J, which is duplicate. It doesn't look like it did anything, but what it did was it made a perfect copy of that selection from the pixels in this layer onto another layer directly on top of it. So instead of it being filled with black pixels, now it's filled with the weird Walmart wallpaper pixels, right? And I can blend them together. I can take opacity on my black line art and kind of blend it in with the, the wallpaper one. And I can find maybe more cat wrapping paper. Save it to the desktop here. Bring it into Photo P. And now that I know how to do it, I stretch it so it covers everything. I could add all kinds of textures and colors to my line art. So I'm going to put it on top of my last one. I'm going to go to my black art, my black line layer. I'll put it back at 100% just so you can see it clearly. I'm going to use my magic wand with contiguous turned off. Select all the black pixels again. Move to this new layer, which is a smart object, but it doesn't matter. And then hit Command J to duplicate. So Command J is like a targeted copy. And if you do Command J just on a layer without selecting anything, it will duplicate the whole layer. So Command J is incredibly helpful. So now I have three different finished layers of my combined jumble. And what's nice is I can play with opacity for each one. I don't want that one. I want that one. And kind of blend them into each other, which can look good. I can also play with what are called the blending modes, like multiply. Let only the darks come through. Or play with some of these other blending modes, like overlay or pin light. These are some of my favorites that will mix and match, you know, based on the highlights and the shadows within those different layers. So for instance, if I use pin light and then take it way down in opacity, I'll have a little bit from each layer. All right, last thing is if I wanted to add some effects. So I could go to my bottom most layer and I leave this at 100% opacity. And if I double click on the layer, I can add things. I'm just gonna play with simple things right now, like a drop shadow. And the drop shadow I'm gonna add is gonna make it look like Arturo Herrera's work is often cut out and then hung on the wall. So this will give a little drop shadow behind each shape, but I wanna play with the distance of it, the size of it, the opacity. I don't want any noise. I want it to be pretty subtle. And I can even choose the angle of it. So you'll see there's a slight drop shadow now around everything. And what's great about these layer effects, which we'll be playing with more later, is they can be turned on and off. So that's with it turned off. This is with it turned on. 
So you can see just those little pixels are now casting a shadow. All the pixels are now casting a shadow directionally. And maybe that's what I like. And then the last thing I want to show, remember this is all optional, but we already saved it as a JPEG. JPEGs have to be a full pixel grid. So when there's empty space in a Photoshop file that then you save as a JPEG, it's going to fill that empty space with white. But if you don't want it to fill the empty space and you don't want it an edge to edge rectangle filled with pixels, you can save it as a different kind of online format. And that different kind is called a PNG. So if I now say file export as not a JPEG, but a PNG, which takes a little bit more memory, just say save. It's going to go to my downloads. And then we can see the difference. I'm going to also mark this orange because it's another online format. When I open up my JPEG, it has a white background. When I open up my PNG, it can have any background I want because this is the default background for this program called Preview. It's a middle gray. So it shows me that this is transparent in the background. So if I put it onto a t-shirt, you know, the t-shirt color would show through. If I put it onto a website banner that was bright red, that red would show through. It wouldn't have a white rectangle around it. So PNG is an online format that supports transparency, which is incredibly helpful for branding, for logos, for things like that. Okay, once I'm done, remember I've got all those features now built into this. I can delete the layers I don't need. I don't need these smart objects anymore. But everything else I want to save into my Photoshop folder, a Photoshop file. And if I want to, I can save all those layers that gave me the individual references. And I can put them into what's called a layer group. They're all still there, but they just don't take up as much space. You select them and you click on the little folder icon. And now I'm just going to save that just with Command S and it will save it where it last saved. So you saw the changed color there. Make sure that's marked green. And then I'm going to organize my files. This will be the last thing I do before we do our critique. So this is the folder I've set up for, for this afternoon freeware class this semester. So I can always rename it, but you, you want your name in your folder. So maybe I'll call it free digital art right. and this was all from exercise one so let's make a folder for exercise one within my class folder and then I'll just move all of the different relevant stuff into it now you'll notice there's an older version there, and here's my newer version. When I drag and drop it in, it's going to ask if I want to keep both of them or if I want to replace the older one with the newer one. And I'll replace it. Because <laughs> this has everything in it that it needs. And then I can move my online formats in as well. My JPEG, my PNG, I can move my new reference in. I can even move my wrapping papers in. And all of that's going to go into my Exercise 1 folder everything that relates to exercise one. I have stuff from exercise zero. Remember our digital avatar. So maybe I make a folder for that. And then I might have stuff that doesn't fit anywhere. So that might just be free floating. Like these ideas for the final exam this semester, which I'm working on. So next, I can upload that new version with the special features to Canvas the same way I uploaded the JPEG. And I can edit my previous entry just by clicking on these three dots. You're all able to edit your own work. Click after it. And then I'm going to post another picture. Upload it. Remember, not your PSD. It's going to be, in this case, the PNG. And then I'm going to shrink it down. And this has color and effects. And I played with merging it and using adjustments to clean it up and then wrapped it with these different colors and effects. 
And this will all get easier and easier with practice. We're going to be compositing for a little while. So you might come back by the end of the semester and decide this is something you want to print or something you want in your portfolio. I've got this weird kind of Picasso-esque cat now in the middle. Like weird stuff can happen. All right. So I'm going to finish up that video. And then we're going to post and do our presentation critiques. And you can post, and you're encouraged to post, even if it's not finished yet. You, you know, we can always edit and improve.